greetings and welcome back to Hearts of Iron 4, where the Mexican Socialist Republic has struck a mighty blow against the United States of America, driving them deep back into their territory. Already Texas has all but fallen to the might of the Mexican forces, as of course it was always destined to do so, having previously belonged to the glorious Mexican nation. Likewise, New Mexico, well, we haven't made as much inroads into New Mexico, to be fair, but we have made at least some inroads into New Mexico, which is nice. Um, Arizona also, we're about halfway through the conquest of, and perhaps most gloriously of all, California, the jewel of the west coast of the United States, I assume, has now um, been, well, I mean, not completely taken to be fair the US are defending it in force but Gallardo with his incredibly brave and perhaps foolhardy plan to dive straight into San Francisco and from there drive a wedge deep up into the west coast has well I mean it hasn't been an unqualified success to be fair we have had some difficulties uh, caused primarily by the fact that lots of American forces have shown up um, and indeed caused us some problems which we're going to have to deal with here. However, elsewhere in the Mexican Socialist Republic, things are going a little bit better. Of course, Ramon, Ramon Sales, the clone brother of our glorious leader, his Venezuelan campaign is actually going pretty well. Caracas has fallen. Um, the rest of the nation surely, surely is uh, but moments away from being captured. And by moments, I mean, you know, days, weeks, or months. But, you know, moments. Moments will do. Um, we do have a massive resource problem, though. We need an enormous amount of steel for all of the stuff that we're building. Um, and indeed, oil. Well, I know we have a huge surplus of oil. Look at that. We have a massive, massive surplus of oil. But we need aluminium, rubber, and most importantly of all, steel. We need just all of the steel. Nobody has any steel to give us, so we just have to make do without it. I mean, what we're making our tanks out of, frankly, I've got no idea. Um, one of the fleets, one of the canoe fleets is in repair at the moment in Panama, um, having obviously experienced um, quite a problem. We can actually recruit a commander for this, look. Let's, let's take a new commander. Here we go, Admiral Emilio Mesquez. He can be made commander of the second canoe fleet. At long last, they have been given somebody. But clearly, once again, nepotism runs rife in the Mexican Socialist Republic because uh, he is brother presumably of the leader of the Mexican Legion of Super Coolness, Louis Farrell, and indeed our highest ranking military officer who is in command of the vast bulk of our Mexican-American forces. Um, of course, Gallardo Magna. I mean, the most charismatic man alive. The man whose moustache is so immaculately manicured that to look upon it is to know perfection. Um, Gallardo is the more important party of the two. Despite commanding fewer forces, it is his uh, bravery, bravado, and all-round awesomeness which is, to, you know, kind of responsible for what victories we're having here at the moment. Um, but let's let's see if we can sort of shore this up a little bit. We need to connect back up because, look, we've become isolated, and this is not good. The American forces are indeed pressing us, and we cannot allow this to continue. Uh, what I think we need to do is we need to bring some of these forces back up. Gallardo is going to come back. We're going to leave one troop behind to defend the port and make sure that our kind of, you know, supply route remains open. And then we're going to fight back to reconnect our forces here. Uh, likewise, let's move uh, some tanks up to the front lines. Move these, both of these tanks up. This tank can come forward. There we go. Oh, yes. Ah, oh, yes. It is going to be extreme of the awesomeness. Let's move this tank up. We're also going to want to connect up here. Um, these are also Gallardo's forces. Look, we're at 24 of 24. Let's bring these forces up. Uh, Louis Farrell. I actually think we can, like, we can, like, modify this border here a little bit. Look, let's bring this front line responsibility of, of uh, Gallardo's all the way back to Los Angeles. And we will bring uh, Louis Farrell's frontline responsibilities all the way up around here so that we can concentrate all of Gallardo's forces for the counter-attack push extraordinaire of uh, extreme awesomeness and we shall conquer California. Gallardo's plan is formulating even as he speaks. He's going to draft in um, some of the flower power hippie allies that he has made in San Francisco to uh, fight on his behalf. Possibly. Maybe. 
or, or something along those lines anyway. Something certainly that will make them think um, that it is their time to give us what we need. Our current nuclear bomb production is nearly complete on our third nuclear weapon. Now, I may have to nuke a city, as it turns out, in order to gain the maximum benefit from my nuclear weapons. So we'll see how it goes. I mean, they do have a significant impact on, like, large groups of forces, but as of yet, they have not allowed us to have the breakthrough that really we wanted. Anyway, let's let the clock roll forward here. I don't think there's anything else that we need to take care of in the immediate. Um, we're just going to move up some of these forces to uh, join in. Um, oh! Wait a minute, before we go any further, we do of course have Martin Bustamante. Martin Bustamante has returned to um, the fold to join us now at our time of need and he is going to prove his worth um, through some kind of awesome action here. Now, I was thinking that possibly we could take a naval invasion and uh, go straight for sort of like New Orleans or something by sea. Um, could be a little bit dangerous. Look, let's move up. Let's move up to uh, the conquered city of Houston, Texas. Um, and there we shall regroup and plan. And possibly also, let's bring in some of these guys um, to join Martin Bustamante uh, in his army. Kind of like bolster his forces somewhat. We'll also have this guy here. Oh yes. All of these forces. Nine troops now. Martin Bustamante. He is... He is dedicating, even as we speak, he is dedicating his vast and uncomparable intellect to the problem of how he can best extract a victory on the front line with the United States, which at the moment, although we are doing well, victory is by no means guaranteed. Tactical control has been researched by the Boffins. Excellent. Well done, Boffins. Um, that's what I like to see and hear and stuff. Tactical it gives us plus two percent reinforce rate we could crack straight on to all frontline battalions gain plus five organization air support plus 20 percent um i mean that's pretty good that's got to be pretty good are we waiting on anything else are we waiting on any like infantry equipment um possibly improved infantry equipment three plus ten percent soft attack uh on everything up to mechanized yeah quite possibly armor Modern tanks are currently being researched. Um, we could, of course, research some of these, like, modifier things, but we just don't seem to care about that sort of thing, so let's not even bother. Let's not even concern ourselves that such things exist. Let's get some improved infantry equipment three um, and improve yet more our uh, capabilities in attacking and uh, indeed destroying and uh, waging um, many, many campaigns of uh, terror and awesomeness. Let's bring up troops. I'm going to concentrate all of these troops to here. We want to try and create like a, a fairly substantial force and then counterattack in here and try and uh, force a breach. Force a breach upon them. Look, we've got forces attacking all over the place. Winning brave and awesome victories for our kind. We're also fighting in the mountains, which is probably not ideal. Do we have any of our mountain troops here? Probably not. I imagine the mountain troops are in completely the wrong sort of positions right now. Um, all right, you tanks, attack. We must re-establish our breached lines here. You two can go up exactly. Yes, that is indeed where I want you. Look, here we have some mountain men. Mountain men, mountain men. Come back over here and uh, prepare to attack to attack and win um, and destroy all of them. Let's unpause it again. Wow. I mean, managing a war on this scale is actually is actually quite an ask. I mean, there's just so much going on. It's really it's really kind of crazy. Look, these, these guys prepare a little bit. Should we give them an order as well? I mean, it may be that Gallardo needs something to, to focus on. He needs something to think about um, and plan for in order to be able to execute um, you know, his, his general awesomeness. Should we just keep pushing him up the west coast um like where's the next most significant place along the west coast like all the way up here here perhaps that seems like quite a long way to go or maybe we could like wrap them around is there is there anywhere of interest in here in this like salt lake city is salt lake city really of interest to us i mean it might make an excellent filming location for um you know the mexican film and television industry but, uh, you know, in the absence of that, you know what, let's just, like, we'll, we'll set the order 
um, for an offensive line to go here, as it's like the next city that we can see. What city is it? Portland! The city of Portland, the, like, strategic heartland of the United States of America's west coast, the city of Portland. Um, I think we can all agree that it is, of course, the most strategically significant and important location um, for anyone, anywhere, at any point, any when. Um, and we're going to assign everyone to that. I don't know if that's going to completely destroy their, like, planning and stuff. Um, but we're not actually going to execute the plan anyway. We just want to build up planning bonuses where we can. So let's continue to do that. Let's unpause it. Our tanks are attacking, trying to drive a wedge deep in here, trying to force out the Americans. It looks like it might be working. Look, we're going to cut off quite a lot of troops. We're lucky here. Look, you, you three, attack there. We want to break through and cut off all of these troops, encircle them and destroy them. Have troops like at sea for some reason. But it's okay, they're coming to land. Um, and soon they will, in fact, have, have landed. Um, and once they have landed, their uh, landing will be complete. Um, we're leaving a territory undefended there, which is not good. Oh, it's alright, we've got two troops coming in. Fine. Uh, in that case, everyone press on and join this attack. Is it working? Oh, yes, look at this. Look at this. Gallardo Magna, the most charismatic and brilliant military strategist of all of the... Americas, all of the world in actual fact, is about to reconnect his supply lines here in the north section. The southern section is going to take a little bit more work. Look, that, that factory, that battle is actually being lost at the moment. Um, we'd better bring in more tanks, more and more tanks. All of the tanks must be brought forth um, to wage war. Look, they've left this territory undefended. Should we just grab it whilst it's undefended? Just because, just because just we can. Um, I mean, maybe it's some sort of trap. Maybe they knew that we couldn't resist the urge to go in and attack it. Um, and therefore, uh, we're like, you know, you know what? We're, we're, we've got some problems here. We've got some problems here. Louis Farrell is being driven back. The United States of America is striking back against us all along this front line. Um, Buster Manti, you are the commander of the Mexican Legion of Ultimate. And you need to you need to earn your keep here. You need to be like the, the commander who is going to come up with the winning strategy. Should we just try and like dive behind enemy lines? Just nip be nip in behind them um, and take the city. Move on up. Move on up to the front line. We are going to continue to press. We are going to continue to press. We will have a breakthrough here. We will not allow the Americans to uh, undo all of the good works that we have achieved here um, this day. In fact, you know what I think we need to do? Louis, you need to stop. You need to stop the attack. We've, we've kind of like run out of momentum here. Um, so all of these troops who are attacking need to just stop what they're doing. Hold position. That was actually winning that battle. Um, so continue that battle. Sorry about that, chaps. Um, you continue that battle. All the rest of you guys, uh, move on up. Move it on up, move it on up. Move it on out, move it on out. Uh, move up, move up, move up, um, and take up position. Good! All right, fine. Let's unpause it again. In fact, wait, we've got uh, three military factories. How many military we've got? We've managed to capture another few of the American factories, and we shall turn them over from manufacturing, I don't know, like Barbies, and um, presumably like uh, barbecues, Model T Fords, which of course are in extremely inferior to the Mexican motor car industry vehicles. Um, and, you know, we'll be shipping those in when we have time, obviously, as well as the tequila. Um, let us not let us not forget the tequila or indeed the Cuban cigars. That would be an absolute travesty. Let's drop production of that down. Close air support will ramp up. That'll do. That will do us for now. Um, it's probably not the most efficient distribution of our resources, but quite frankly, the shortages are beginning to have an impact on tequila and Cuban cigar manufacturing. Um, although not, as it turns out, nuclear weapon manufacturing, because we have another one of those available now. Another one is available and at our disposal. Uh, you know what? Forget about taking that territory. It's only going to lengthen our line, and it's, it's just a trap. They're trying to trap us, and we will not be trapped. We will not allow um, for ourselves to be trapped so obviously um, as that. That's just not our way. Look, we, well, apparently we have this random line here. Can we delete this one random line? Delete order. There, it's gone. It's gone. It looks much cleaner now and more uh, awesome. 
it looks like we are going to successfully connect. We'll leave one troop behind in order to maintain our line and encircle all of these troops and hold back the rest. Uh, likewise here, we'll leave some of these guys behind. Counterattack, but we're fine. We are repelling it. All is looking well. Gallardo has reconnected with the rest of his forces and a mighty cheer, a wave of cheers, a Mexican wave of cheers, you might say, is now passing back down along the front line all the way through the troops, bolstering morale and making them all feel thoroughly awesome. Um, let's hold up here and let everyone recover their organization a little bit. Um, and possibly we could nuke them as well, if, if we need to. Um, but we'll just let them recover organization for the time being. We're getting a bit of attrition due to bad supply because, of course, this area is now cut off. Um, although we do have two ports feeding them, which is good. Two ports is better than no ports. What's this guy here? No orders. What? There you go. Assign yourself to that front line um, and, and be happy with that. You two can assign yourself to that front line. In fact, you know what? Assign yourself to this. That's where the orders are coming in. That is our ultimate plan. That is the goal, the mission of Gallardo's forces here in California to drive on to Portland. On to Portland goes the cry throughout the um, flower decked lands of the west coast of. Uh, Mexican occupied United States of America. Yes, yes, oh yes, it is. It is truly a great day um, for our guys. All of them. All of our guys. Look, you two can be assigned to that. Start building up your plan preparation bonuses. Um, do we have any spare aircraft that we can possibly assign down here? In fact, you know what? We need to beef this airfield up. Where's our construction crews? This airfield uh, doth need beefing up. Airbase. Let's get three levels of airbase improvement in, and we will chuck that straight to the top. Straight to the top. We also struck up New Mexican infrastructure to the top as well. Uh, let's not have that right at the very top, but you know we'll move it down a few notches, um, and it'll still it'll still get worked on. In fact, that's actually meaningless moving it down there. Look at nuclear plants all of the nuclear plants we must have more power citizens of the mexican socialist republic the war effort is of course of paramount importance but we must not forget the nuclear power requirements of our various and assorted secret projects they are of course extremely important to our survival as a species and our mission our plan to reach the moon and other new frontiers Yes, my friends, whilst our brave soldiers fight all along the front line, our boffins strive towards winning a victory on another front entirely. Um, we also appear to have still lost out on air superiority. That's fine. We've got supply problems on the west coast and the southwest. Bust the Manti. Bust the Manti. You need, you need a plan. We need you to form a plan and to execute a plan. First of all, we need a front line. And your front line is going to be like just there. Just that. That is it. Just that one front line. And your orders are to uh, break through and maybe take this city. What's this city? Little Rock. The, the, the strategic heartland of Little... Oh, Springfield! Kansas City. I mean, look at all these places. Look at all these places that we clearly need. That we must have. I mean, we've nearly taken Texas on this front. So we could possibly, like, just kind of, like, leave it at that. I, rather than extending our front line, I guess what we should probably try and do is, is come around and just kind of consolidate here a little bit. So uh, let's have them head up. Uh, and, well, you know, we'll do it. We're going to go for Little Rock. Our, our mission is to take Little Rock. Apparently he can do it like that, by teleporting from this territory to that territory. That doesn't seem very likely, Buster Manti. I don't know what your time in Canada has taught you, uh, but frankly, uh, whatever it is, is uh, strange indeed. It is truly strange indeed. Be done with it. In fact, you know what? Let's not do that. Let's not do that. This area here could really be wrapped up better. Um, if anything, Buster Manti, your forces are in the wrong place. We need you over here. You know what? Just march over here. March over here. Forget about this front line. That was a mistake. That was a mistake. The 
from the very beginning. We need you over in like the, the really like contentious area. The area that we are struggling with at the moment. That is where we need you and that is where you're going to march yourself to. Um, and you're going to do it. Double time, mister. Double time. We have a non-aggression pact request from the Socialist Republic of Germany. Except, you know what? Let's, <laughs> let's go and see what's going on over in Europe. Just, you know, we'll just take a quick break from the madness of the American frontier and take a look at the German industrial estate, which surprisingly is still kind of fairly substantially under our control. We, we lost a lot of territories around here and presumably we're losing a lot more, but it does seem like um, Soviet forces have entered the country and are defending our border pretty well. I mean, they're at least putting a fight up anyway, um, which is good. What's this? Infantry division. We actually have an infantry division here. Oh, this must be like, um, this must be one of the ones that was uh, that was volunteered to us from the forces around here. Well, you know what? Let's let's actually pull him let's pull him back into the German industrial estate, and he can be our one technically under our control representative who will defend to the last the German industrial estate, protecting it from uh, the insidious attacks of the European powers who seem destined to conquer. Pretty much all of Europe at this point in time. So, um, you know, let's not worry too much if and when we lose all of that. Because as we lose, we also gain. I mean, look at that. From up here, you can see just how big of a chunk of the United States we've already managed to carve out for ourselves. And the battle is far from over. Um, fighting on, we indeed fight on. Look, we're winning along here. This is good. We have completed the encirclement project. Meanwhile, world news. Socialist Republic of Albania has capitulated. Oh no! They were members of the Green Dawn! Though the war against Greece and the rest of the Allies continues, this is an unfortunate setback for the Green Dawn. Yeah, these are dark times. Dark times indeed, although obviously members of the Green Dawn over here probably are essentially doomed. I mean, members of the Green Dawn in the Americas, I think we can kind of, you know, we can do a fair amount to protect. How are you getting on down here, Ramon? Are you, um, are you even, like, doing stuff? Can we just kind of like issue some orders for like mass charges? Mass charges into uh, the remaining states of Venezuela to conquer them uh, for ourselves and indeed to make it ours and ours alone. Um, under the command, under the stewardship, of course, of uh, Ramon Salas, clone brother and all round new boy in the Mexican Socialist Republican Army. But this campaign in the South, although it's not as glamorous, you know, it's not as awesome as the campaign in the North, it is equally important to our long term strategy. Look what we've got down here. Are these like more volunteer forces. They are, you know, these are, these are more volunteer forces ready to rock and roll. Um, wow, okay, they're like slowly making their way up into our territory. I guess for now, let's assign them to um, the uh, clonish ass kickers of Roman Salas. He's look, look at this. He's now got the second, third biggest like force in uh, all of the land. Cool. All right, guys, we'll just march on up here. And see what you can do once you get here. See what the state of affairs is like when you eventually arrive at some distant point in the future. Let's unpause it so that that future can can arrive at some point, can reach us at some point. Okay, we really need to achieve a breakthrough here. Our organization has recovered, so uh, let's just go ahead and charge. Charge in and attack. Come on, boys, we need to win. We need to win here. We're not winning. 32. Uh, it's not going our way. We have 70 combat width to their 97. We have 110 combat width to their 113. We're still not winning, though. Look, 32. We've got air superiority. Attacking from multiple directions, but but their 11 divisions plus tanks are uh, holding back the tide. Holding back the tide indeed. Let's bring another division. In fact, can that division attack? That division can attack as well. That division can indeed attack as well. All the divisions are just going to attack. All of you boys, attack. Attack, attack, attack. All people attack all of the time and never stop attacking. Uh, can we like break off some of these forces. These guys should be like suffering attrition so we can basically just sort of wait for them to die off. Hold back. We'll let them suffer their attrition. It's fine. They're suffering attrition and we're not. On the, on the whole, anyway, we are not. So let's just, let's just sit tight and wait for them to weaken. Decryption side channel attack. The boffins, meanwhile, 
beavering away in our secret boffin dens um, that pockmark the Mexican countryside. When they're not playing Mexican Zork, of course, they are working on our decryption technologies and we have managed to devise a new side channel attack um, to further decrypt the American communications. Um, and we're just going to continue to crack on with that because we do give away a encryption decryption disadvantage to our foes. Um, but not for long, not for much longer. We need more troops up here. How are our recruits coming? Recruit and deploy. Training is coming along, um, but not really fast enough. How are our men? 1.59 million. That's fine. Infanteria Bravados, I'm going to add another couple of divisions there. Uh, Tanky Maximo, I'm going to add another one there. Tanky Ultimo. In fact, let's add another two Tanky Maximos, because I think we were sort of like... Uh, we had all we needed as far as that was concerned. And let's add another Division de Unicornio. As we're back, two more Divisions de Unicornio. We must have all of our divisions. We must have them. We must have as many troops as possible. We just have such a long border that we need them. We need them every... We need w way more troops than we've got. I mean, look at the Americans. Look, he's managed... He just keeps bringing in more and more troops. They are piling up now on the border. Um, our ability to drive through them is going to be sorely tested. In fact, look at this. I mean, if he decides to counterattack down here, how are we possibly going to hold him? It's crazy. We are stretched thin. We may have bitten off more than we can chew. Um, but but let's not forget, Buster Manti is on his way in. And plus, we can always nuke him again. We can always nuke him again. Let's unpause it. Um, and let, let our divisions continue to battle on. Battle feverish, feverishly on. But take this. Take this and drive it back. That'll um, shorten our line. In fact, what we should do, really, is we should look to shorten our lines wherever we can. You guys there, you can attack as well. Attack there. See if we can, see if we can take him. Drive him back. Shorten the line. And take that as well. Sort of shortens the line. Maybe a bit. Okay, th this attack is not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Look, there's no way we can. No way we can get through. There's just too many of them. Way, way too many. I don't know what we're going to do there. And we could maybe drop a nuke on this territory and then strike it again. But, but I mean, nukes are... Oh, meanwhile, world news. The Federal Republic of Venezuela has capitulated. Dino Inca has announced, This is a message to the world. The cowardly Venezuelan nation could no longer withstand the pressure from the overwhelming presence of Mexican forces throughout their country. The Venezuelan government has chosen to flee, probably in wicker baskets like they did before, out into the sea. Sadly, we did not get a hold of their bourgeois elite because this time we were sworn to destroy them. But no, they have getaways. No good. But never mind. Nonetheless, the Venezuelan country has capitulated and once again tequila and Cuban cigar supplies have been returned to the people of Venezuela. There is cheering in the streets and although Gallardo Magna could not be there for the party, he is there in spirit and my clone brother Ramon Salas will indeed be the one to preside over the pool parties, the tequila bomb sessions and other such festivities. Um, fantastic. The war against the Allies continues, but this is a victory for all of the Green Dawn. Great news. Um, let's go and see what's actually going on down here. Alright, so Venezuela has capitulated. They've still got quite a lot of territory, it seems. Um, let's just kind of like continue to drive in there uh, and into, to batter them. Batter, batter, batter. Also attacking. Good. Uh, it should only be a matter of time. We'll completely conquer this. And then we will move on and begin to attack these these territories. Um, the United Kingdom uh, and indeed uh, French and presumably Dutch territories. They shall, they shall fall to us. Unless, of course, Brazil gets there first. But so far, Brazil really hasn't done much of anything. Um, they've just got... Look, they're sitting there getting... 43% attrition, sitting in the jungle, sweating away um, on the border. I don't know, doing what Brazilians do, um, whatever that may be. Uh, more tanks coming in. You know what, actually, I don't think we're going to need all of these forces, especially with more coming in there. So let's move these forces back to the port, and we'll probably try and bring those up um, and help with the fighting in the north. They're going to join... 
Buster Manti. They're going to join Buster Manti by sea. They'll probably get intercepted along the way um, by the Americans, but uh, they're going to go for it. They're going to make they're going to make a dash. Make a dash! Make a dash to that port! There we go! In you go! Division to Infanteria and Mexico's um, going where they must go. Going where only the bravest dare go. Going into the great fireball, the great turmoil, the great war which rages along the Mexican-American border. A war which shall not end anytime soon, I fear. And a war which is going... Well, I mean, kind of okay for us. Um, we still haven't managed to connect back our our forces here. We have sort of like got a, a sort of a sense of stability along here, but it just seems like a, only a matter of time before the might of the American forces um, presses in on us. However, Bustamante is moving into position. We need more troops up here if we can, please, guys. Infantry, infantry everywhere. Uh, ready to strike the twin divisions. I mean, they're not very well organized and they're pretty depleted, generally because of the fact that they're, like, roving around in a nuclear wasteland that's been, like, you know, repeatedly blasted and they've been harried from the air continuously by the mighty Mexican Air Force. Um, but oh, I don't know. It's, it's going to be, it's going to be hard. It's going to be a hard fight when they decide to counterattack. I just don't know if we're going to be able to hold them. But for now, they are indeed being held. Even though our supply is being stretched thin, our forces nonetheless are fighting on along the border and fight on they shall and in the future we shall see just how much progress we can make and whether the United States will strike back and win victories of their own but until that future arrives thanks for watching everyone I have been Weird Wizard and I will see you later